Until recently, for example, some citizens have been using social media, Facebook, to organize demonstrations against the severe lockdowns they're currently living under. Expressing your views about the decisions that politicians make is protected under our Constitution. You could argue, in fact, it's the whole reason we have a Constitution in the first place. It's literally enshrined in the First Amendment, and for a reason. But Facebook doesn't care. Facebook doesn't recognize the U.S. Constitution. It doesn't recognize our country's centuries-old norms. As CEO Mark Zuckerberg explained on ABC, people who complain about the lockdown and organize others to do the same have been removed from the site for, for providing, quote, misinformation. We do classify that as harmful misinformation, and we take that down. Misinformation. That's a term that should give you the shivers. It's how totalitarian regimes dismiss views that threaten their power. That's the country we're suddenly living in. The state of New Jersey recently issued criminal charges against a woman called Kim Pagan. Her crime? Organizing a protest against the lockdown. In other words, she criticized the governor of New Jersey, so his employees had her arrested. Are you comfortable with that? Our leaders are comfortable with it. They applaud it. It makes life easier when your critics shut up and go to jail. They like that. In Elizabeth, New Jersey, the mayor there is using unmanned drones to spy on citizens and make certain they obey. That sounds like something they do in China. And they do. Needless to say, it should make you very nervous when politicians leverage your fear to make themselves more powerful. It ought to terrify you when they start arresting people for the crime of disagreeing with them. Our media exist to push back against these kinds of dangerous excesses. That's why we have the First Amendment. Are we watching a flou d'etat? The press ought to be asking that question. They should get to the bottom of it, but they're not. Instead, they're cheering on the repression. Watch MSNBC explain how anyone who disagrees with the politicians they like is, needless to say, a racist. I think that what they're saying quite clearly, when you see the numbers, when you see the statistics, when you see the CDC data is, I want more black and brown people to die. Right? That, that can't, if you want the government to open up, then you want more black and brown people to die. So irresponsible, it's hard to believe it's happening. Many of the media seem to be enjoying this crisis, and they are. It's been a great opportunity to talk at great length about their all-time favorite subject, which is themselves, and how much more impressive they are than you. Here's that weird little guy on CNN. It wasn't until um, this Friday night that I hit a wall. And that's when the tears came. So we have nothing to compare this with. So it can be incredibly alarming. It can be incredibly depressing. Media can help. Making media can help, but the emotions are real for everybody. They're a big part of the story. Oh, barf. This is a guy who got a special exemption to the government quarantines he so fervently supports for other people. All of us in the media got that exemption, by the way. This is a guy who's working in a high-paying job when tens of millions of Americans are not working at all. Please be quiet. Your tears are not, quote, a big part of the story, and neither are you. For God's sakes, please stop talking about yourself. It is unsufferable. But they can't stop. The most consistent byproduct of privilege, always and everywhere, is narcissism. So it's not surprising that our pampered overlords just cannot shut up about themselves. 